Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. So this is a quick overview of the plan for the next set of readings. I'm really excited. I'm recording this um, on Easter Sunday so I want to say um, I am getting a bit of a religious thread through my readings at the moment and I don't want to make anyone feel excluded. So I know that we all have different values and different uh, backgrounds and we all bring different things to the table. I want to say that everybody's welcome here but I am picking up on a bit of a theme and it is I think a collective energy that a lot of people who do believe in various uh, spiritual practices or um, identi identities, um, you know that vibration is kind of high at the moment so it's natural that I would pick up on it in my readings. Anyway, uh, again, I don't want to exclude anyone, so please take whatever re is relevant to you and just exclude the rest. It could just be for somebody else, right? Uh, everybody's welcome here. I want to kind of really stress that. So um, I was working today and I was walking home from work and I could see this specific card in my head. I, I was seeing this pattern, so I knew I was to use this deck. I was seeing the box art. It was like really really insistent so like this in my mind's eye I was like there's something in that deck and I was seeing this specific card unbelievably um, I call it the Jesus card so again don't worry about your own personal belief system everybody's welcome here um, but you, you you can see like the art style and it's the healer of the ages it it looks like that right so um it's a lovely card. It does talk about the, for me, my interpretation of this card is the healing ability of love and unconditional love as well. So if you think about Ace of Cups energy, that kind of unconditional love um, for the self and it's kind of like um, a thread that runs throughout everything. So it's like everything has this kind of like, like pure love energy to it. And again, I am not from a particular religion. Um, I am not pushing any particular religion here. It's just my own belief system that I've developed over time. And the things that I feel when I'm doing meditation and my ability to connect to that kind of universal one energy, which is very, very healing. So I was seeing this card and I was like, I think what I want to do for this set of reading readings is what you need to heal. So if you completely take out, if you see yourself as like one person and completely disconnect yourself from everything around you, so we're not talking about trying to heal your family situation or trying to heal a friendship or trying to heal a connection with somebody else. This is entirely um, autonomous and within you. So what you can do to heal something within yourself as a completely separate entity to everyone else and, every, you know, everything around you. And of course, sometimes the things that we need to heal within ourselves can be about other connections, but it's about taking ownership of your own healing and not being codependent or not being, um, and not having that kind of victim consciousness of these things happen to me, I am a victim. It's like, how can I empower myself? How can I really dig deep um, and find that source of power within me and kind of utilize it and grow and develop and, you know, really expand my soul experience? Um, so with that in mind, um, I'm asking, um, so I've already pulled some cards. This is kind of like my practice my practice um, spread, um, but it's got an interesting message. So I thought I'd share it with you. It's it's going to be somebody's message, right? So I've asked what needs healing. And again, it's something within you. So it can be like abandonment wounds, uh, you know, uh, things that you beat yourself up about, um, you know, anything within you that is like, this needs to be resolved within. And then, so what needs healing? How do you do this? And advice. So here, what needs healing with this person? And I feel like it'll take strength to do this and it could be something about their own confidence. So it's something to do with victory, this, this concept of victory. So it's something within them where they have an idea of what it means to be victorious or what it means to be successful. Like what makes them feel victorious? So there's something around that that needs healing within this person is clarified by the King of Cups. Now, the King of Cups, especially in this deck, um, he doesn't have a lot. He's really quite humble, right? He's uh, he's not wearing, like, designer clothes. He's, you know, he's just in the ocean. He's chilling, but he's really, he has that sense of, like, um, satisfaction. You know, he seems like he's satisfied and content with life. Now, the King of Cups, Cups talks about emotions, and this is, like, deep, 
deep emotions. Um, I'm hearing abandonment wounds for somebody. Somebody could, okay, we'll get into that in a second. I'll finish one thought before I start another. Um, so for someone, it could be it like chasing some kind of lifestyle or chasing some kind of goals. Uh, the, you know, what they identify as as being successful, right? And chasing those things and then finding them quite hollow and not satisfying. And it's like, well, what... <laughs> There's, it's no good chasing things that are outside of you. It's no good chasing money or prestige or designer clothes and things like this because they're not going to heal the wound that's inside you. You have to heal what's within first. And it's like, do you know what? If you are the King of Cups, if you are emotionally calm, you know, really kind of in touch with um, what you feel, how you feel it, you've got that kind of satisfaction. And then on top of that, you want to have the icing on the cake and kind of have a nice car, then that's absolutely fine. But but it's like you don't need those things to feel whole and fulfilled. Um, the interesting thing is like his heart is radiating on this card. It's kind of, he's got that kind of like that glowing heart space. And this King of Cups has this kind of like beating heart kind of um, graphic on it. And as I was kind of looking at this card, I got a big heart thump inside my chest. So it's like, what makes your heart thump? What really what really makes you tick, what really speaks to you on a soul level, like that's what victory should mean to you. So somebody resolving some kind of, um, um, some kind of false ideal of what victory means and it can be like trying to impress other people you know trying to have that insta Instagram lifestyle that you know you think will impress other people but ultimately feels really hollow or the things that really bring you true satisfaction and that might just be sitting out on the beach uh, I don't know taking your boat out uh, it could just be something really simple right but it makes you feel that connection to the universe you know it makes you feel like whatever is within is connected to something that's higher so a uh, really nice energy for some of you because I was hearing like abandonment issues uh, the king of cups could represent somebody's father specifically if their father is a Scorpio um, and um, you know almost like trying to please the father like the father could have set some kind of ideal about what victory means what it means to be a successful person um, and it's like trying to impress that father figure and um, so um, again coming to terms with that and figuring that out so that's going to be for somebody but not for everybody the boat I'm really getting drawn to the boat I don't know if somebody has a boat maybe they weren't sailing with the father something like that um, it's making me think I just recently watched um uh, the Truman Show, um, where, um, you know, this, I don't want to kind of spoil it if anyone's not watched it. And I definitely like recommend you go and watch it because it's a brilliant movie, but there are, there are, there are things in that movie about boats and fathers. <laughs> so, uh, check that out if that is interesting to you. So how this person is to heal this, um, now, immediately when the, both of these cards came out, I was really drawn to the fact that they both say blue on them. So blue bell fairy and blue bird spirit. Um, so um, I was really, really getting the blue period. Um, now this, I Googled it because I was I was like, that sounds like an artist. <laughs> I think an artist went through a blue period um, and it was Picasso. So Picasso's blue period, uh, somebody may be an artist, um, you know, maybe somebody really likes the blue period. Um, and it's also like a, a, a series of like, manga comics as well which I don't know if that applies to anybody but I was really getting like the blue period and it's like you have to go through it so um I feel like there is uh, I'm not seeing anything here about grief or loss or anything like this but it's like almost with the nine of swords as well which is a card about uh kind of like the dark thoughts or you know beating yourself up about things it's, it's like uh distress but mental distress so I am kind of getting almost like the blue period is like almost like a period of sadness or a period of depression it's like there's something that's healing in that so you know, it's unpleasant to go through. None of us want to feel sad. One of, none of us want to experience uh, the emotions that are, you know, that we're taught are bad emotions. But sometimes it can be very, very cathartic and healing to actually allow ourselves to feel what we need to feel. And this is something that the King of Cups knows and understands. He doesn't deny any emotions. He acknowledges all the emotions that he has and all the things he feels. And he is at peace with that. He's like, okay, I'm having a down day. 
I'm going to be kind to myself today. Do you know what? If I need to spend the day in bed or I need to take my shoes off and just go and walk through the grass in the garden, you know, if that's what I need to do today, I'm going to, I'm going to give myself that kindness and uh, do what I need to do. Uh, so it's not like putting on a happy face. I keep getting this reference for somebody as well. This kind of fake a smile or put on a happy face, the kind of like the joker stuff. It's, it's not healthy. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, they're giving me fake a smile. There's a song called fake a smile. Um, so it's like, um, you know, it's not healthy or, um, desirable or, um, realistic to expect to be happy all the time. It's interesting. This bluebird spirit is happiness. Um, it's, it's like, it's okay to have down days. It's okay to have things that make you feel sad. If you don't want to smile that day, it's okay. You're allowed to have sadness. So it's almost like to, to heal whatever this is, there has to be a sad period. You know, you have to allow yourself, you know, because the nine of swords is almost like fear as well it's almost like the fear of going through a blue period um it's making me think as well just mentioning um the last man on the earth uh the last man on the earth that's so funny that that came out um sorry the uh the truman show um Okay, I'm getting two things at once. So I'll finish the, again, I'll finish one thought before I go on to another. So Jim Carrey, um, he kind of had that nihilistic period. Um, and uh, he's obviously known as a comic. Um, and it's, there's something about his success, right? He always played the comic. He always played like, you know, the mask or the Riddler, you know, this comic role. But I think he has this underlying sadness to him. A lot of comedians do. Um, if you look at Robbie Williams, for example, Robbie Williams, Robin, Robin Williams, um, you know, is another example of a comic, a, a brilliant comic actor who has this underlying sadness. And it's like almost like, and again, Picasso, um, you find a lot of artists, a lot of creative types, they do have this sadness to them. Uh, they do have this, um, almost like empathic or very highly sensitive nature, um, which I think sometimes they can almost like, it can cause them to almost shut down or shut that part of themselves off because it's it's like they feel too much, right? Um, and it's almost like I, I need to be able to function. I need to be able to have this victory or have this success and allow those um, darker thoughts to uh, not, not, I don't know. Um, let me, I'm just trying to sort of finish. Um, but there's a, a great well of um, resource in there, you know, to be able to tap into those blue periods, uh, those darker feelings, those darker thoughts. Um, it's incredibly, not only incredibly, uh, like a brilliant well of um, artistic material, but also incredibly cathartic for other people. So again, going back to the Truman Show, because I've watched it recently, it's kind of in my head. Um, it's, it's, a very very human film and it's very there's a lot of darkness to it and there's a lot of uh, sad painful emotions and it's almost like actually the ability to understand that and the ability to tap into it uh, is what created that masterpiece of a film you know I don't think that film would have been so successful if uh, the people who were creating it hadn't been able to tap into those dark parts of themselves um, and draw on that like the pain of Jim Carrey's face when his um, there's a scene in that movie where you know he's he he thinks his dad's dead and he's he sees him in the street and these people come and like take him away onto this bus and his face as he's running after the bus like it's just a he's just a brilliant actor and so again like being able to there's it's like there's beauty in the breakdown right there's um there's something to be gained in allowing yourself to have the blue periods um so I, again I want to say it's not healthy to be sat in that all the time because the nine of swords is almost like bad mental health but it's like it's almost like Perhaps spirit is trying to get somebody to to go through something, to, you know, to go through some uh, a, a period of actually feeling some emotions that perhaps they've suppressed or through allowing themselves the the time and the space that they need to uh, to feel what they need to feel and kind of move on from that. I want to say an example. And again, if you need to, to seek professional help, if you need a doctor, if you need medication, then absolutely do that. But don't be scared of the darkness because there's 
there's things that can be tapped into there that kind of rather than depression it's almost like melancholy and I think there is almost a difference uh, it's kind of like um, there's a poeticness to one of those and again I don't want to um, if you're again if you are going through some kind of um, everybody's got a personal experience this is not everybody's reading some of you are definitely going to go through uh periods of mental health where you need that support and you need that medication in which case absolutely go and get it but um i think if you have something something that tells you that you have to be happy 100% of the time you don't have to be happy 100% of the time and I think if you are happy 100% of the time like nobody is right nobody's happy 24 7 you know <laughs> like all the time it's it's unnatural it's freaky right is there's something not right if somebody's happy all the time um so it's almost like um you know moon cycles or uh female menstrual cycles as well I know that I'm very in touch with my men menstrual cycle I know that I have um, up moods and down moods and everything in between and there's days where I just feel sad and I'm just like I can't get anything done today I need to be kind to myself today I need to just go back to bed and I need to not beat myself up for having the, that need you know I need to be kind to myself I need to nurture myself because this is what my body needs this is what my mental health needs um, and just having that kindness to yourself um yeah um, so like I say, if you're going through a period where, you know, you've had a long stretch of depression and you're really not coping well with it and you need to go and get help, get help. That could also be the message here. But again, I, with this being like what you need to do to heal this part of your soul, it's like allow yourself the sadness, allow yourself the, the time, the space, the the permission to be sad if you need to be sad. There could be specifically something with bluebells or bluebirds. Uh, this gives makes looks like a robin to me. And there's also something really symbolic about white animals for you. So there's a white animal here. I'll just bring it closer so you can see. I'm saying for you, um, when I say you, is for whoever this reading is for. So you've even got actually um, this white lamb here. Uh, so the white lamb this kind of like white deer or elk or moose or something like that on this one um there's this white uh horse or unicorn on this card sorry there's actually also a white bird like mixed in with all these other blackbirds here um i'm getting three one and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie you've even got a very rare animal which is the white raven now of course um Ravens are usually black. This raven is white. This seems to be really something very, very significant about white animals or white birds for you. If this, this reading is for you. Uh, and you've even got this white horse here. So why do, why, ride a white horse to Banbury Cross. So white animals specifically seem to be meaning something um, to in this reading. Um, so the advice then. So um, kind of like this is the problem this is what we need to do and this is the advice i'm actually just going to read those cards uh before we move on just to really make sure i'm getting this message through correctly so blue bell, uh what is it blue bell fairy gratitude so this is um what needs to be done right yeah the early morning forest is shrouded in low-lying mists as you step into the meadow you glimpse heavenly blue flowers seeming to seeming to float above the mist their deep color draws you closer each bell-shaped blossom bows down on its stem as if in prayer humility or gratitude so there is definitely something about gratitude and humility again um I think uh, if we're going to go back up to this character up here, this kind of Christ-like character, you know, he was a carpenter. He was very humble. You know, he wasn't a showy person. Um, and I think there is, um, I was sort of thinking about my wood here as well. Like the desk I use, I was kind of, as I was starting my reading, I was thinking, oh, do people judge me for this? But then I like it and it's a solid piece of furniture and it's functional. And I actually like that it's got a little bit of a story to tell to it. So again, it's like this piece of furniture itself is humble. Um, so I think sometimes we can judge ourselves on the standards of other people when actually we need to be true to ourselves and what speaks to, to us in our core, right? If I like this piece of furniture, I'm going to use this piece of furniture because it's it, it touches something in me, right? <laughs> I don't know what that is, but it's like, be humble. You don't have to chase the gold shiny things to impress other people. 
Uh, gratitude is the secret to a joy-filled life. True thankfulness can work like modern day alchemy, yielding happiness and peace, happiness, right? Beyond imagination. And it's so simple. Find what's good and wonderful in every moment. No matter what's happening around you, there's always something to be grateful for. So it's like, maybe this is somebody who's particularly anxious. They have a lot of worries. They have a lot of fears. Like they're always thinking, what if, what if? It's like, find the silver lining, right? Find the white bird. There is this like white spirit um, around you that is trying to show you like, focus on the glass half full, like focus on you know, the potential or, you know, what can be done rather than the fear, I feel. Um, again, it's like maybe this is like developing some kind of coping mechanism um, to pull, like this person developing this coping mechanism within themselves to pull them out of the blue periods rather than perhaps relying on some other things. Again, what works for you? I don't want to, I'm not a doctor, right? I'm not a psychologist or anything like this. I'm just reading cards. So again, you know, do speak to the people around you, but you can, you know, some things work for some people and some things don't work for others. So it's like, if you're on long-term meditate, it's like, if you're on long-term med medication for, um, you know, perhaps something like depression and it's not working for you and it's been years. Um, have you tried therapy? Have you tried talking therapy? Have you tried all these other things? And some of you are like, yes, I've tried everything. And it, it's like, it's okay, that's fine. Maybe it's just something chemically going on with your body, you know, and the medication works for you. But it's like, if it's not working, have you tried the other thing? And vice versa, if you tried the therapy and you haven't tried medication. So it's like every single person's different and we have to figure it out for ourselves. But there is something to um, rewiring our brain and rewiring our thought patterns in a healthier way, which again, like I feel like therapy can help with and finding the right therapist for you can definitely help with. So sometimes it can be negative thought patterns. For example, uh, I will never be good enough. I will never find a, um, somebody who's right for me. I will never find a job that I'm happy with because perhaps you had a parent who was very critical. Um, and every time you tried to do something, perhaps you always had that nagging voice in your ear saying, oh, you should have done better, you know, or maybe if you'd have tried harder. And that nagging voice of the parent has become your own internal dialogue where actually you can break that cycle of self-doubt, of negative self-talk, you can, with, with the right counselling, you can break that cycle and you can um, speak to yourself in a healing way. You, you can speak to yourself the way that you wish, uh, you know, your parent had spoken to you and you can actually break those thought patterns. You, you can rewire your brain. It is possible with the right support. So that could be helpful for somebody. Um, okay. And it's so simple. I mean, it, I wish it was simple. Find what's good and wonderful in every moment. No matter what's happening around you, there's always something to be grateful for. I am aware that that can be quite a toxic, toxic attitude, but again, it's finding what works for you. Whatever you appreciate in life will grow. So discover what you're thankful for. Even the people and situations you've found challenging and watch miracles unfold. The universe is grateful for you. So the challenging things, actually, there's lessons to be learned in that, right? Even if it's just you know, I learned that I can persevere through really tough situations. And yes, you shouldn't have to, but you have that ability, right? Um, and hopefully you don't have any more tough such situations. But if something else is thrown at you, you know, I survived that so I can survive this, you know? Um, appreciation for everything flows through you in great bounty. Cherish the preciousness of life and everyone and everything around you and miracles will abound. So it does have the feeling of somebody who's chasing some kind of victory or goals um, and then forgetting to appreciate, you know, the life that's around them, the children, the friends, the family, the roof over the head, the food on the table. It's like, remember to be humble and grateful. The attitude of gratitude, the universe will, uh, the abundant universe provides, right? And the more you focus on the positive, the more the universe is going to help that to grow. Um, in addition to gratitude, bluebells are thought to symbolize humility. As you step into the soft, gentle energy of humbleness, you'll find that your gratitude for even the smallest things in life expands. So again, it's something you can practice. Uh, bluebells open the door to magic. Uh, legends describe ringing the bluebell like you would a bell in order to bring fairies to you. In spring, bluebells grow throughout the woodlands in a lush carpet and you can feel the magic simply by being there. 
The spirit of the bluebell fairy says, the more gratitude you have, the more bounty will fill your life. Cherish the preciousness in all things and joy will fill your life. The universe is thankful for you. Okay, so let's go to bluebird spirit. You follow the sweet songs of birds into the forest as you find the source of the sound. You see in the tree above you a flock of bluebirds. The bright colour of their wings shimmers in the sunlight. Their song envelops you in a soft embrace of bliss. This card is a harbinger of delight. Celebrate and have fun. Embrace life, yourself and others. Say yes today. Soar to the clouds and let your doubts dissolve. All is well. It's simple. Your purpose in life is to experience happiness. That's all that's required of you as a soul. Maybe somebody's always looking for what's going to go wrong. It's like, oh, this this is too good to be true, or I'm too happy. It's like, what, what horror is the universe going to bring to me around the corner? It's like not allowing themselves to just enjoy the moment, perhaps, or enjoy what they have. Um, like always chasing the next thing. It's, maybe it's like slow down, you know, Vienna will wait for you kind of energy. Um, that's all that's required of you as a soul. You do not need to be unhappy to please another. Wow, that's interesting, isn't it? You do not need to be unhappy to please another. That is an odd sentence. Maybe that resonates with one of you. You do not need to be unhappy to please another. Maybe it's guilt about being happy. Like I feel guilty that I'm happy when other people don't have this happiness. You know, that's definitely something you can experience when, you know, especially like watching the news and seeing what people are going through. It's almost like, I have victory. I am satisfied. And yeah, I feel like I don't deserve this. Well, I guess you do. Like spirit says you do. Um, Whatever your circumstances, there's always something that can bring you delight. And whatever you put your attention to will grow. Again, attitude of gratitude, focus on the positive and the universal will, will respond to that. When you focus on the areas of your life that bring you happiness, these areas will prosper. One of the fastest paths to true pleasure is through sharing and giving. So give of your heart and share your love, especially if you do, you do identify as this King of Cups character. Like that is like a bottomless pit of like love. Um... Happiness spreads to others like wildfire and can help heal the world. Dance and sing with abandon. Joy is your spiritual birthright. Affirm happiness and ecstasy throw, throw, flow through me wildly and freely. Spirit of the Bluebird says all is well. Say yes to life and let your doubts dissolve. Don't wait for the future. Live life fully now. You do not need to struggle or suffer to grow. You can grow leaps and bounds amid joy. So maybe I got it wrong there. Maybe this blue period is... Um, maybe somebody has this attitude of like, I'm not meant, meant to be happy, happiness isn't for me, or I don't know what it is, but it's like the universe wants you to be happy. The universe is like, be thankful for what you have, even if you don't have whatever represents, you know, victory for you. If you have, if you can find the satisfaction in the small things, in like the humble things, um, even if you don't have much to be thankful for, but you go out and you feel the sun on your face and you're like, I'm thankful that... I'm thankful that the sun exists. You know, I'm thankful that the universe exists. I'm thankful that I can look up at this, the night sky and see beautiful stars. Like it's, it's, you know, I'm thankful that ugh, I can eat an, an ice cream sometimes. You know, whatever it is that you're thankful for, it's like, that's a small victory, right? That is a small victory. Having a moment of I'm thankful for this. I'm thankful for my children. I'm thank you, thankful for my husband, my wife, my um, father, my mother. I'm thankful for, even if they're not great, right? Even if they cause you problems, it's like, you know, I'm thankful that I do have people that I can fall back on. I'm thankful that I have people that, you know, whatever it is, you know, and some people don't have that, you know, we, we all have different stories, but, you know, it's, it is like focus on the silver linings here. Okay, let's keep going. Um, so I love this Ace of Wands as well. It's so um, positive because the Ace of Wands is like a new start, like passion, uh, enthusiasm, creative ideas, like getting new things off the ground, like really seeing like a new passion for life. So this is your like actual advice here, 66.
you get it uh, trust in the magic nothing in the universe is random for the intricate web of co-creation weaves together all events and has done so since the beginning of time coincidences have meaning and white raven spirit appears to remind you to pay attention to these synchronicities so that you might recognize patterns even the winds dance in a pattern participating in the magic of spirits plan for all align with the highest good and intentions and you will come to see that white raven is guiding you an ally to you and a messenger for, from spirit align with the light and you will start to recognize that all is working together harmoniously in ways the eye can't always see and the mind can't always comprehend the universe is conspiring on your behalf right now drawing you to the light and bringing you the magic and miracles that are your birthright now is the time to trust in the magic of the world that is everywhere and in all things. Pay attention to how things come together as if by magic and you will see the hand of great spirit arranging things in your favour. Yeah, it definitely feels like don't deny the sad emotions but accept them and still have gratitude and still look for the light and move towards the light interesting these is it's like 66 and 33 so it's like half of 66 i don't know if that means anything to anyone um 33 Horse spirit, freedom is yours. When horse spirit appears, you are gifted with the spirit of movement and freedom. It is a time for travel and adventure, whether that means taking a trip somewhere or taking a different type of journey, one of freedom of choice. Horse spirit reminds you that no matter the circumstances, you have free will and the choices that you take can take you far away to a better place, a better situation and a better state of being. For there is no one but you to reign in your will to make a different decision. You are capable of making powerful choices that will affect you for a long time to come. Horses are social animals and known to be a friend to mankind, willing to take us forward when we need it. Horse Spirit reminds you that help will be available to you where, wherever you need it and companions will be by your side wherever you choose to go, whatever direction you choose to travel. feels like someone's having a bit of a, a fresh start, uh, but having some guilt over that. Um, life is an adventure and Horse Spirit wants you to know that whatever choices you make, you have great spirit within. Again, w the spirit within. You like listen to what your internal dialogue is saying you know listen to what that higher version of yourself is telling you not the darker version of yourself the higher version of yourself uh, it's like listen to the angel on your shoulder and not the devil on your shoulder um because the devil on your shoulder to me is like the self-sabotage or the negative thoughts or you know the things that tell you you're not good enough or you know it, it, we know right we know what's good and what's not bad for us we do um so it's like listen to just move more towards the light and the positivity and the universe is going to reward you for that um great spirit within invisible yet holding you up and always walking by your side if your inquiry is about a relationship you can set your heart free to experience love in all forms spirit whispers to you that the gift of freedom is yours if you allow yourself to break out of your perfectionism and stubbornness make a move and enjoy the freedom of letting go of the need to control so that is the reading and that is the advice and it looks like this is going to bring somebody a really exciting fresh start you know freedom and this ace of wands that's a really exciting kind of passionate like i'm going to go for this energy so um the again the white animals seem to be very symbolic for you and also this thing about like like almost like hearing the bluebells like hearing the bells and like seeing the birds i don't know if there's some symbolism to that for you uh but again it's like almost like the dark birds are almost like your negative thoughts and there's this white bird that seems to be really pulling you in this new direction which seems to be really healing will take strength to go through it um you know i want to say cast aside any uh anything where you feel like you're not worthy like because the strength card is like confidence as well so don't judge yourself against the victories of other people you know look for that in a well of um unconditional love from within and again if you are spiritual you know that divine love that unconditional love of god of the universe of jesus whatever you want to call it it is there for you to to tap into for those of you who aren't um particularly religious this is just your own soul right your own um your own 
deep awareness of who you are and your own worth because you're a good person, right? And even when you've made bad choices, have kindness for yourself. Imagine um, somebody that you love it, and it's like you love them unconditionally and they can do no wrong. And it's like when they fall down, when they make a mistake, you know, you tell them, you say, it's not your fault. You know, we all have bad days. Um, you know, let's let's fix this. Okay, you made a mistake. What can we do to fix this? How, you know, have you learned your lessons from it? Are you going to do it again? What can we do to make sure that doesn't happen again? Like, you have that kindness for other people. So have it for yourself. Um, and yeah, don't get stuck in those perpetual cycles of, like, the blue period. But I think, again, there is, like, the blue period, whatever that is for you, is, like, there is something in that for you to, it's almost like the artistic potential of the blue period, the artistic potential of the darkness or the cathartic, like the ability to take the difficult periods of our life, the difficult things that we've gone through, to draw the humanity out of that, to tap into that creative potential, to create something that other people can, um, can, can, access when they need to experience something when they need to feel something when they need to you know unbottle something and just cry so a lot of people you know really find for example Picasso's blue period uh you know there's a connection there there's a bond there because it it talks to some kind of human experience that we all have um so it's like what is that for you? What can you, what can you take out of that? Like mine, those periods of darkness for the resources, um, you know, for that golden shadow energy and then leave all the negative kind of like self doubt or feelings of unworthiness or guilt or whatever that is, leave that in the past. Cause that doesn't help anyone, including you. So yeah, keep moving forward with the kind of the emotional depth and tranquility that the king of cups can um can access you know he can really tap into those deep waters um excuse me my tummy's rumbling quite a bit i don't know if you can hear that um and uh, yeah i'm i've got green tea <laughs> i'm drinking green tea because i'm kind of detoxing and it, it it kind of upsets my tummy a little bit it makes my tummy a bit growly so <laughs> Sorry if you can hear that. Uh, again, it's, it's human, guys. It's just a human body doing what a human body is supposed to do. Sometimes human bodies make weird noises. So I'm sorry. I'm not really sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, I hope this was helpful to you. Please take care of yourselves. And I will, uh, yeah, I'll be back with Aries's reading on Monday. And uh, yeah, and we'll see what, uh, we'll see what each sign gets. Okay, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Oh, typical of me. I always forget something. So I did randomise a song for you as well for this reading. And it's uh, Chew On My Heart by James Bay. So take your time, I'll be right here. I know that no one could ever love me better. Take all night, you're the truth that is breaking me and keeping me together. I want to be in your touch, sleeping so tough, you're burning up my mind. What would it feel like if you tore me apart? Come on, chew on my heart. Uh, so I hope not literally. Um, yeah. Um... I'm a fire, I'm a hot mess, I'm thinking things that I might start regretting, so hear me out, I need you now, I'm spiralling, I'm sinking down, look for me, I'm sending up a message. So um, yeah, I don't know, it does feel like it's this kind of energy, uh, so maybe go and have a listen to that song and kind of see if there's anything in there that's, um, you know, a resource for you to draw out, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna go again, bye friends.